Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 10th of February. India equipped to deal with coronavirus outbreak, Health Minister assures Parliament. Pakistan's Islamist politician Fazlur Rehman announces second round of anti-government protests. And Sri Lankan economy recovering post-Easter terror attacks, says IMF. And now for all the details. India's Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan on Monday informed the parliament that the country is well prepared to deal with the novel coronavirus threat. So far, three cases of the flu-like deadly virus have been found in southern Kerala province and the patients are kept in isolation. India's Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan on Monday gave a detailed account in the parliament of the action taken by his ministry to stop and contain the outbreak of novel coronavirus, three cases of which have been reported in southern Kerala province. The Health Minister informed Lok Sabha, the lower house of the parliament, that a total of 1,818 flights had been screened, covering at least over 197,000 passengers since January 18 till date. He said the government has constituted a panel to monitor the situation and is coordinating with other provinces as well on the issue. At least 654 persons were evacuated by the Indian government from China's Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak, on 30th January and 1st of February. After evacuation, they are presently under quarantine at special facilities on the outskirts of Indian capital New Delhi. Last Friday, India announced temporary suspension of its e-visa and normal visa facilities for Chinese travellers and other foreign nationals residing in mainland China, amid the outbreak that has claimed lives of over 900 in China so far. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, who is on a five-day state visit to India, offered prayers at the Mahabodhi Temple in Buddhist pilgrimage town of Bodh Gaya on Monday. Rajapaksa earlier on Saturday held delegation-level talks with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi, where the two sides agreed to work together to tackle the menace of terrorism. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa visited Mahabodhi Temple, a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Buddhist pilgrimage town of Bodh Gaya in India's Bihar province on Monday. Rajpaksa, accompanied by a high-level delegation, offered special prayers at the temple where Lord Buddha is said to have attained supreme knowledge. The newly elected Lankan leader, who is in India for a five-day visit, earlier on Saturday held delegation-level talks with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi. The two sides focused on expanding cooperation over terrorism and discussed joint economic projects in Sri Lanka. Indian Prime Minister Modi, during a joint statement, also called upon the Sri Lankan government to ensure equality and justice for the Tamils, an ethnic and religious Hindu minority in the island nation. In news from Pakistan, Leader of Pakistan's Jamiyat Ulema Islam Fazl Party, Maulana Fazlur Rahman, has announced that he will once again launch a campaign against the Imran Khan led government. The announcement comes after JUIF and other opposition parties last year carried out a movement against the government demanding Prime Minister Imran Khan to step down. Chief of Pakistan's Jamiyat Ulema Islam Fazl or JUIF party, Mulana Fazlur Rahman has announced he will soon lead a second round of last year's anti-government movement across the country. Fazlur Rahman, after holding a consultative meeting with his allied parties on Sunday, said JUIF with its allies will hold a convention in Karachi on February 23rd 
a national convention in Islamabad on March 1, and Azadi or Freedom March in Lahore on March 19. JUIF, along with its coalition partners, last year carried out an anti-government freedom march and a sit-in for days in Islamabad, asking the incumbent government to step down. Thousands of protesters accused Prime Minister Imran Khan of rigging the 2018 general elections with military support. After holding numerous talks with government representatives, the protesters vacated the campaign in Islamabad. Rahman then announced that his party would continue its anti-government protests in other regions of the country as part of its so-called Plan B. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi, one of the fastest growing mega cities in the world, complain that in recent times the numbers of transport buses have witnessed a sharp decline and public transport system is in a critical condition. Pakistan's port city of Karachi at the moment is facing public transport crisis, according to locals. Karachi residents complain that in recent times the numbers of transport buses have witnessed a sharp decline and public transport system is in critical condition. Commuters have to travel in buses that are poorly maintained, worn out with zero safety standards. They allege that bus service providers have increased fares but fail to provide good quality transportation to them. Regular commuters fear for their lives as they travel in dilapidated buses that they say can collapse any time. They blame the government of inaction. हालात बिगड़ते जा रहे हैं लोग जो है जो है बेचारे जो है खाने को तरस रहे हैं और जो वो अपने जो है मजे ले रहे हैं तो मेरी गवर्नमेंट से ये गुजारिश है कि भाई वो जो है आकर जो है लोगों से हालात हालात मालूम करें क्या गुजर रही है गरीबों के पास गरीब आदमी जो कर रहा है उसको पता है लोग तो गाड़ियों में बैठे हुए जो भी मुशर्रफ साहब जितने भी आए सदर सब गाड़ियों में झूले ले रहे हैं गरीब आदमी जो पिसरा उसकी तरफ कोई ध्यान नहीं है तो मैं धक्के खा के हम लटक के आते हमें पता है ना ये लो सीटों के आप देखें सीटें टूटी फूटी हैं कराया डबल मांग रहे हैं तीस रुपए कराया जी बीस रुपए कराया तीस रुपए मांग रहे हैं। The fundamental issue in dealing with the transport crisis in Karachi is related to governance, which locals allege is embroiled in negligence, ineffective policies and rampant corruption. Though the government had earlier in its 2019 budget announced rupees 5.2 billion for the development of public transport. But so far, the conditions have not improved. In news from Afghanistan, former special envoy of Afghan President for Peace, Mohammad Umar Daudzai, has said that the establishment of Loya Jirga, a traditional grand assembly, is needed to build a national consensus about the ongoing peace process. Former Special Envoy of Afghan President for Peace, Mohammad Umar Dodzai, on Sunday said that the establishment of a Loya Zirga, a traditional Grand Assembly, is necessary to build a national consensus about the ongoing peace process. Speaking during a conference on peace in Kabul, Dodzai said the next step after a Loya Zirga and a meeting of the Council will be the peace negotiations. He, however, suggested these steps should be taken after the swearing-in ceremony of the future president, whoever he is. The presidential palace last week confirmed that a list of delegates for a negotiating team has been prepared, but Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah's office has opposed the format so far. A lawyer zirga held in May last year had called for an immediate ceasefire between the government and the Taliban. Ghani agreed to a truce provided it was not one-sided. The Taliban, however, rejected the call. Sri Lanka's economy is gradually recovering from the Easter Sunday attacks with GDP growth projected at 3.7% in 2020, the International Monetary Fund has said in a statement. This came after an IMF team visited the country recently and met the newly elected government and discussed its policy objectives. The International Monetary Fund or IMF has said in a statement that Sri Lanka's economy is gradually recovering from last year's Easter Sunday attacks with GDP growth projected at 3.7% in 2020. The statement came after an IMF team recently concluded its visit to Colombo and met the newly elected government and discussed its policy objectives. The IMF staff mission to Sri Lanka estimated the real GDP growth at 2.6% in 2019, 
but expected the GDP to bounce back in 2020 with 3.7% on the back of the recovery in tourism. Sri Lanka's economy was badly hit after its tourism got affected post-Easter Sunday attacks that targeted a number of hotels and churches across the country and killed over 250 people. The island nation's growth had also dipped below 3% last year, which many attributed to the policy uncertainty during the previous government, headed by Maitripala Sirisena. The new government, headed by President Gautapaya Rajapaksa, now claims that one of its targets include achieving a 6.5% economy growth per annum from 2020 and a GDP growth of US$6,500 per capita. Rights Group National Human Rights Commission has directed Nepal's government to immediately evacuate Nepali students from Hubei province of China in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak. So far, more than 800 people have been killed around the world in the coronavirus outbreak. The National Human Rights Commission has directed the Nepal's government to immediately evacuate 185 Nepali students from Hubei province in China in wake of the coronavirus outbreak. The deadly coronavirus outbreak has so far killed over 800 people all around the world. The rights body in a statement on Sunday said that its emergency meeting decided to direct the government to create an environment to bring back its citizens from Hubei. Pointing out the risk of Nepalis contracting the disease if they stay in the region for a longer period, the rights body said that it has decided to summon secretaries of various ministries to take stock of the situation. Meanwhile, family members and relatives of Nepalis stuck in Hubei have been making rounds of various ministries with a request to expedite the evacuation process. The government formally initiated the process of evacuating Nepalese earlier, but it has not been able to finalize the location to house evacuees as they will have to be quarantined for two weeks once they return home before they are released. The fifth edition of South Asia's biggest art BNL, Dhaka Art Summit, is underway in Bangladeshi capital, Dhaka. The event provides a rare opportunity to experience multidimensional works of art from all across the world under one roof. Hundreds of artists from various countries are showcasing their work in the fifth edition of South Asia's biggest art BNL Dhaka Art Summit, currently underway in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka. The nine-day Grand Arts Festival was inaugurated by Bangladeshi State Minister for Cultural Affairs, K.M. Khalid, on Friday. According to the organizers, more than 500 artists, including painters, sculptors, curators, art critics, art professionals, art collectors and architects from 44 countries are taking part in the exhibition. With the theme seismic movement or transmission, different artworks related to geological movements, colonial movements, independence movement and social movements are on display at the event. Samnani Art Foundation and Shilpakala Academy had been jointly organizing the event since 2012 to provide a rare opportunity to experience multi-dimensional works of art from all across the world under one roof. Scores of devotees thronged to catch a glimpse of a decorated tableau carrying idols of gods floating in a temple tank in India's southern Madurai city during an annual float festival held recently. The devotees offered prayers and performed rituals to seek the blessings of the gods. Devotees in India's southern Madurai city sailed a decorated tableau carrying idols of gods during a famous float festival held recently. A 12 feet tall decorated pedestal carrying idols of Hindu goddess Minakshi Devi and Lord Sundareswarar was seen floating and making rounds in the Vandiwar Mariamman Tehpakullam temple pond as devotees pulled the ropes attached to it. Thousands of devotees thronged the temple tank, offered prayers and performed rituals with adoration to seek the blessings of the gods on the 10th day of the annual South Indian Float Festival on Saturday. Water from the city's Vegai River was pumped into the pond through traditional supply channels, filling it completely after 40 years. 
where the deities were taken for two rounds in the morning and evening. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.